What's up everybody, James Jackson here. Today um, we are talking about uh, still the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Um, today I kind of wanted to go more in talking about dynamic range, especially how dynamic range works with the dual native ISO system that's in the Pocket 4K and sort of see how it compares to other modern um, cameras that do video as well. I sort of try, did this video before and I didn't really like the way that one was going so and I was trying to think of different formats of doing it because I really want to talk about dynamic range but I feel like it's it's going to overflow and sort of the message of the other videos are going to get lost so originally I had planned to do like a three-part series where I talk about dynamic range in depth and then talk about dual native ISO in depth and then to uh, do like comparisons like this to the C200 and other modern cameras com uh, against the Pocket 4K. But I felt that was just more convoluted and I'd rather just get straight to the point. So I'm gonna go over the majority of what I was gonna talk about in this one video. However, if you want, really want a in-depth video on dynamic range and sort of how the process of going from the raw sensor to the parameters like log and the codex to editing it and then also how it is uh, still manipulated even to the distribution side regarding how it's viewed via the how it's viewed through monitors and other uh, viewing formats leave a comment below and I will definitely do a in-depth discussion about dynamic range Sort of just briefly ago, if you don't know what dynamic range is, it's basically what the camera can see from the whitest of whites to the blackest of blacks, from the highest, brightest parts of the image all the way to the shadows. And in most modern cameras, the way um, it's affected by a whole bunch of parameters like log as well as the codec, if it's is it 8 bit, is it 10 bit, 12 bit, etc. etc. Um, and because of that, you don't actually get to maximize the dynamic range before you even get the chance to edit it. For example, the GH5S has way more dynamic range on the sensor than what you're able to see coming out of the camera simply because the log profile VLOG L is capped out at uh, 12 stops of dynamic range. But the camera can still see more than that, but you can never see it regarding video. You can see it if you take stills and you try to replicate it in post because you can get the raw uh, sensor images f uh, from the camera. You can't do that in video. But because this camera shoots raw, more importantly, it shoots 12-bit raw, you can capture all of that information and maximize the sensor's capabilities from shooting all the way to post. And what's so great, what makes it even better, is the dual native ISO system. So let's get this misconception out of the way. Dual native ISO does not mean you can shoot at these ridiculously high ISOs um, like the A7S where you can shoot at 25, 23, 23,000. Those are all dealing with noise processing. That's not what dual native ISO necessarily deals with. What dual native ISO does is it gives you about the same dynamic range. Most modern cameras um, like the a7 III, the, uh, the Fuji cameras, the Canon uh, mirrorless and DSLR cameras, they all tend to shoot at 8-bit codexes and they only have one set of gain circuits, so one series of ISOs. Um, so what happens with a lot of those is a lot of them have great highlight recovery, but if you try to underexpose a lot of them, they tend to fall apart really quickly because of that 8-bit codec. Um, but because the pocket cinema cameras, the, the, the lowest quality the pocket cinema camera can go to is 10 bit, 10 bit 422, what it does is it gives you way more flexibility um, of shooting underexposed compared to just simply overexposing, which many of us in the industry uh, goes by ETTR or exposure to the right. So if you're shooting on those cameras, those are sort of the things that. Those are the techniques that you would probably use is you would over tend to overexpose and then pull everything down because you don't have the information in the shadows. That's not the case with this, particularly with raw. 
because with raw you you got you do have a lot more noise simply because it's not doing the noise processing that most cameras have with this camera one of the great things about it is because it shoots raw and it has that dual native iso it resets the circuit the second circuit to behave similar to how the dynamic range behaves at the, at the lower circuit for example on the pocket cinema camera 4k you can start the second circuit at 1250 and at 1250 it behaves in terms of noise very similar to iso 160 and then 1600 behaves very similar to iso 200. so if you understand which means it's uh 1250 1600 and all those isos sort of before you get to the second native iso which is 3200 you're seeing a lot more information into the shadows then, and in the blacks than you would in the highlights. Now this also means that your highlights are clipping faster, but the point I'm trying to make with this is if you understand how your dynamic range is working and if you know that you're getting more information in shadow details and depending on what the scene you're shooting, you can actually shoot at these second lower ISO settings like 1250 and 1600 and then it gives you a lot more flexibilities in that black and shadow region that in post you can pull it up and, re and have less noise with moving the exposure around because you're sh you have a lot more cleaner blacks. And this is particularly true with RAW. So I've done a couple test shots comparing this camera to the Canon C200, but also comparing I the different ISOs and how they operate at correct exposure as well as underexposure, and how do they behave um, in between. And what I found out was very interesting. I felt ISO 3200, which is the second native ISO, you can go probably about another stop and a half before the noise really kicks in. I, you can even go to maybe two stops and you can probably still recover it, but it depends on your shooting. But I would definitely say a stop, a stop and a half over uh, bringing it up of going under exposure and then bring it up and you can ha and you have a very workable image. But what the most interesting thing is, is let's say your exposure correction is at 6400 ISO, but in raw 6400 ISO is very noisy. And what I discovered is if you shoot, depending on the scene you have and how much is if it's like really more basically the entire scene is mostly in the dark or in underlit situations you could actually shoot at 1600 iso bring it up two stops which would be the equivalent of shooting at 6400 iso in post and the noise level is much cleaner than actually shooting at 6400 iso and you don't have as heavy of a color shift bringing that exposure up in post than you would at actually shooting at 6400 ISO. So what essentially what I'm saying is this camera gives you way more flexibility than most modern cameras does. The thing with the C200 is the native ISO is 800. And just like if you're with this camera with RAW, if you're shooting in underlit situations, you kind of want to shoot below the native ISO so you can preserve the shadows and the blacks. But the problem is, is that it's 800 and then you, I mean, you got to drop down to 400 and 200 and then 200 trying to bring it up to something like a 3200 ISO. It, it just doesn't work. 400, you can probably bring it up to the equivalent of 1600 or even 2000 ISO, but it's it, but that's as far as I would really push it. So it, it doesn't give you as much flexibility in underlist situations. So you definitely want to light more with more modern cameras like the C200 and then with mirrorless cameras and DSLRs, you don't want to underexpose at all because the noise, because it doesn't have those good codecs, robust codecs, it can't preserve all that detail and that information. Um, so that's what the big thing I wanted to talk about. It's just the things I keep discovering about this camera is just how fun it is to shoot in various environments and then finding ways to just uh manipulate the image i can get off the sensor with raw or prores in post in terms of your exposure your dynamic range for compared to most modern cameras because of that dual native iso system you can push and pull the exposure 
quite around quite a bit uh which is one of the best things about this camera if you're shooting prores i would say you can shoot up to six, uh, 64 and even to possibly 8000 iso and you can to get with away with it pretty well and throw some noise reduction and you'll be fine simply because ProRes has the noise reduction applied and it's actually the noise reduction that is used similar to the Blackmagic RAW so it's really a nice uh, noise reduction processing however when we're talking about RAW I would say don't shoot anything above 3200 ISO I would say if you the, the farthest I would push it is 3200 ISO and then in post I would bring it up and but you're going to definitely see the noise and then apply noise reduction however if you can find out sort of where your exposure is so let's say your exposure is at 6400 iso i would definitely say shoot at the lower iso something like 1600 or even 1250 but uh and pull those up in pulse because you will have far cleaner blacks and you won't have to apply as much noise in post pulling it up that way because you have all that 12 bit information so hopefully you guys like this video. Make sure to leave a like, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know if you really want me to dive more into dynamic range because it's something I've been wanting to talk about because I've searched the internet and there hasn't really been a, a serious video discussion about dynamic range for video. There's a lot of dynamic range, talks about dynamic range in terms of monitors, HDR, and photo side. But it really doesn't delve into the processing that most modern cameras do of, of the dynamic range, going, as I mentioned in the beginning. But like I said, leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the videos. And until next time, take care, guys.